There's a pretty common saying in War Thunder, if you want to have fun, play lower tiers. There's a few reasons for that. For one, older tanks give you more room to make mistakes. And two, top tier is very unbalanced. As the game becomes more modern, and newer vehicles start to be added, the dominant nation changes with each major update. Currently, Russia is at the top, with about a 70% win rate. And looking at what Russia is getting in War Thunder's 2.0 update, it looks like they'll be holding onto that crown for a while longer. Seeing as they're getting a premium T-72 and a T-90, bringing their total number of MBTs up to 9. Some people say Russia is dominant simply because they have more MBTs, and that their tanks aren't competitive on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. While the number of MBTs does have a large role in Russia's dominance, it's not the only factor. I don't agree with the notion that Russian MBTs only succeed because there are more of them. In my personal experience playing them, they can be very effective, especially when used aggressively. I think Russia dominates because their entire top-tier lineup is comprehensive. They've got the best helicopters, the best SPAA, the only top-tier ATGM vehicle, respectable cast planes, and the best IFVs. In fact, I think they're pretty much the only tree that has top-tier IFVs, excluding Sweden. So while adding more MBTs to other nations would help, it's not the full solution. Top-tier lineups need to be diversified across the board. For me, Sweden stands as an example that this idea would work. Though Sweden's tech tree is generally small, they have a good assortment of viable top-tier vehicles, putting their win rate above other nations. Some smaller nations will have trouble fleshing out a top-tier lineup, but even just a few more vehicles would make the situation better overall. When it comes to America, they're in an alright position, though I definitely see some room for improvement. What they lack the most are viable ATGM vehicles and IFVs. I would add the M3A2 ODS, which would have access to APFSDS and TOW 2s, at around 9.0. This wouldn't be great, but it could work as a support vehicle in a 10.7 lineup. For a true top-tier IFV, I would add the Bradley CVAS Demonstrator. This used a dual-feed 35mm cannon. The CCVL Losat Demonstrator, which fired kinetic energy missiles, could also be added as a top-tier tank destroyer, directly after the Striker MGS. For light tanks, the MA AGS could take the HSTVL's place at 9.7, while the HSTVL could be moved up to 10.3 or 10.7 assuming that everything with it was fixed. As far as Germany is concerned, I think that all they need are some more Leopard 2 variants, as well as a top-tier IFV. I'm not well-versed on German IFVs, but it seems like the Martyr 2 could be comparable to the CV-90. For Leopard 2s, they could get A2s or A3s, which wouldn't be very special, but they could be good backups. All Russia needs is a top-tier wheeled vehicle. This could be a BTR service model or something like the Jala S, which I talked about in one of my other videos. Unfortunately for Japan, there's not a whole lot that can be added for them. Obviously there's the Type 10 MBT, which would be the capstone of their tech tree, but there aren't many options for support vehicles. Really their only options are some of the Type 90 prototypes. Britain, France, and Italy are sadly in the same boat. They all could get some MBT variants that wouldn't really change anything, as well as one or two support vehicles. Britain could get the Warrior CTA Demonstrator, essentially a CV-90 equivalent. Italy could get the Draco wheeled SPAA, basically just a wheeled automatic. And France could get the VPX 5000 Hot, which would be a small and mobile ATGM platform. Since Sweden is getting another STRV-122 next update, I think they're pretty much set. Now obviously adding more vehicles isn't the only way to balance top tier a lot of other changes have to be made. There needs to be a wider variety of maps, spawn point costs need to be re-evaluated, and repair costs need to be equalized. Some players don't bother respawning because their tanks cost so much more than the competition. Anyway, I'm sure I'll talk more about this in the future. If you have any suggestions for balancing top tier, let me know. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.